my name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Darkest Dungeon, specifically the Darkest Raptor of State, the second of his name. So we've chosen our party, you might wonder why we're on the survivalist screen, and that is because there's a couple of survival skills that I really want to pick up. I want to pick up Therapy Dog? Why can't I hear anything? Oh no, I forgot to plug my headphones in! I am the world's least professional, man. Uh, and Marshall, you should also pick up Lash's Kiss, so you can have the plus three speed for four battles, as well as the self-heal and the remove of Blight and Bleed, which it's likely you'll be afflicted. With which it is likely you will be afflicted. There we go. Upgrade the abilities that we are going to use. Toxin Trickery is actually a little more likely to be used than typical. Literally none of those will be... Uh, fits you. You actually do have to pick up Abyssal Artillery, funnily enough. And none of those either. Okay. We are ready for the mission. The mission itself is Lighting the Way. It is the second Darkest Dungeon mission. With the crew prepared for it. So, circumstance dictates, I go. We've chosen a flagellant as our front line. Our second line is Fitzhugh the Occultist. Our third, and this is a change, a departure from our plan, uh, which is I wanted to take a Plague Doctor, but instead I've taken Fontemai. The big reason for this is because Fontemai is going to be able to guard someone, and if I'm not taking a Man-at-Arms on this mission, no, I do want to take a Man-at-Arms on the next mission, so I've got a choice one way or the other, right? Uh, if I'm not taking a Man-at-Arms on this mission, because I want the extra damage from especially Marshall being a Quick Reflexes Legend Flagellant, then... I'm going to need a guard somewhere because you only get three Talisman of the Flame in order to prevent a huge amount of stress and damage from the Revelation attack that the Templars can do to you. So I've chosen a dodge heavy character who can then be guarded by another dodge heavy character. We could end up with two characters just never being hit uh, over the course of the fight. Now, Marshall is also going to be able to take away the blights and bleeds that are going to be heavily affecting our teammates. So he's kind of faux making up for the loss of our Plague Doctor. Hopefully I don't use Suffer a huge amount on him, but the plus 40 prot is actually pretty damn good on that. Uh, we've also got Beast Hater and Eldritch Slayer on Fitzhugh, so this is his time to shine, shine, shine uh, with an N. Uh, Fontemai does only have Eagle Eye and Warrior of Light actually affecting them at the moment. Musad has Beast Slayer as well as Unerring, and Marshall has the stack to stack. Right? This is correct. I'm just I'm just giving this the, the once final over. This is correct. I didn't screw up something horrible and ignore someone that I had specifically curated for this mission. Except for Baudet, who, being Beast Hater and Eldritch Hater, he doesn't, he would be taking 30% less damage in each battle, but he doesn't actually get extra damage to deal to the opponents because he deals damage via an attack that deals basically no damage. So, you know, an extra 30% damage on that is not going to do anything. His damage is dealt via the Plague Grenade. Him being thick-blooded could have been helpful. He's thick-blooded, check it and see. It's going to be really helpful that Marshall actually has a really high bleed resist. And that Musad has a high blight resist. Both of those are going to be particularly good in this dungeon. Alright, let's go. If it is abandoned, not all heroes are guaranteed to survive. Completely fine. Alright, we've got the three hands of glory. We've got a shovel. You don't need shovels in this mission, so that's fine. I'll go for the three full stacks of food. Hunger procs are much rarer in the Darkest Dungeon. It's worth noting. Two stacks, two stacks, two stacks. Oh, I've left myself no space for... Torch. Am I going to be bled or am I going to be anti-venomed uh, more, moreover? Probably not a huge amount of each, to be honest. If I could get rid of this shovel... Can I just... Man... 
If I could get rid of the shovel, I would pick up the torches here. Another stack of torches, that is. I think instead I'll sell back the holy water and I'll just go torches. Okay. We're going to burn through these quite quickly, unfortunately. This is pretty much how it has to be. I could risk going lower on food, but I actually want a stack of food that I'm going to be able to frivolously eat between dungeons. Torches, food. I also kind of want medicinal herbs because we will have debuffs in this fight that I actually dislike. The thing has no name, for it needs no language. Nevertheless, those who would submit to its word this will are rewarded in a fashion. The creature's blessings are as repulsive as they are robust. Twisted, half-human monstrosities stalk the flesh-ridden halls, protecting their gestating god. Adorable! The protective talismans will shield only those who equip them. Beware. Alright, which way do I want to go first? I mapped this out in my brain already. Yes, yeah, the final one I want to go is over on the right side. So first I go left. Madness made flesh. It crawls steadily upward from the pit, supported by the lattice of cyclopean pillars. You should probably be holding uh, Toxin Trickery right now. Will I have you jump forward? I kind of only have one stun available at the moment, so I'm not going to move myself forward. I want to be able to use the Occultist stun. Unfortunately, my bleed chance is not going to really cut muster here. I didn't even think about that. I just thought, yeah, no, I'll be able to bleed these. Without even considering... The fact that if I take an accuracy trinket so that I can hit the enemies that have higher dodge then I'm not going to have a bleed trinket. That was a rookie error. Very rookie error. What was my bleed resist, but it's still substantial. Press this advantage. Split those Stand daggers. Stun the frontliner. I really like that Fitzhugh's taking their turns quite early here. It's very handy. At least we're hitting the debuffs, and the debuffs are going to help me bleed with other characters. It's unfortunate, though, the way that I've somehow formed this. Am I going to stun again in the next round? Probably not. Continue Just kill that. Slot. Remove its guard. Destroy them all. We can just go for straight kills. It's fine. Okay, so Priest Priest Rapture. Yes, we've just faced that. Foolish horrors. Brought low and driven into the mud. Now, the plan that I've made is because I did end up pulling up the map for this because I, I've played this before. I know this map. It's just I don't entirely remember it right now. And the point of these dungeons are you're supposed to scout them and then come back better prepared for them. I can't obviously afford to do that right now, though. Okay... Start removing these cultist priests. Unfortunately, if I don't hit the bleed or the bleed resist, this suddenly just becomes a really weak build. Yeah. Here it is, quite uh, plentifully demonstrating that. Okay, we're looking for 19 on him. That's a really unfortunate guard for me. Twenty-two, near the high end of the damage I could have dealt there. I'm, I feel better about that. Good dodge. Twelve, and we did hit the debuff. Yikes! Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. Well, we got one of them down, I guess. That's a finger, and it managed to actually hit the bleed. That's, uh, repulsively annoying. A singular strike. Good crit, though. Their formation is broken. 
Maintain the offensive. I'm fine with that hit actually because now it gives me a target to redeem. Redeem on the back line. I should have the ability to stun this malignant growth a fair bit. So I'll use this as a recovery fight because we're about to go in and fight the Temple Impaler. And I'm not too keen on going into that fight a little bit gimped, let's say. Okay. You two can just swap back and forwards. One th uh, yeah, I should be able to stun again. The problem is my stun is going to deal a reasonable amount of damage, so this is not a sustainable stall. Not at all, in fact. Actually, we're losing a lot of stress here. Maybe I just, like, exsanguinate. Let's go, go. Let's go! I could have done that, in fact, on the Malignant Growth and not bled it. Flesh to flesh, heal yourself for a lot. Hey, it brought itself out of lethal. Nice. It's actually kind of handy. Damn it. Doesn't hit the stun resist where it's needed. Let's see if we can get the stun again. We totally can. All right, you move backwards. We might be able to eke another turn out of this. Flush the flesh on yourself. Heals for 10. You're still alive. You're out healing that bleed. Well done. Papa's real impressed. Can't stun that again, though. So we'll go for the heal. Alright. Flesh walls the front line. A single shot from anyone will knock you over. A gust of As wind could knock falls, you over right now. A faint hope blossoms. Yeah, I'm probably not going to be able to prevent that from getting a turn, especially considering my bleed action. Yeah, Days the mind. Five damage. Not bad. Keep lowering its resist. We might be able to bleed a Eldritch Stump. Sorry, my apologies. An Eldritch Stump. Okay. Nice. You know that stress a lot more. The four damage to a character. Gotta kill him, though. You've been alive for too long. All right, this is going to be a good fight. Confidence is a slow and insidious killer. In fact, after we kill the Temple Impaler, we can probably use this for a little bit of recovery as well. Is there anyone in particular that I want to give a Holy Water to? I might want to just give a Holy Water here to each of these. Because they're very, very likely to take blights and bleeds right now. So I'll use two Holy Waters per fight we go into. The final fight is going to be the worst one. We're not going to focus on the polyps at all. We're going to go entirely for the Templar Impaler. Okay, he doesn't actually have bleed resist. That's good. That's good. Twenty-four, high end of our damage. Beautiful. Gonna have to guard backwards. I can't take a revelation. Venomous Phlegm. How dare you Phlegm me? Ooh, we're marked. Never mind, it's fine. Dodge him. That attack actually wouldn't have done anything, so I guess I'd, I'm not really pleased to have dodged it. I'm not really displeased to have dodged it. 29. I could have gone for a stun there, but this guy gets two actions per round. Which is part of the reason that I want to bleed him. Yikes! That's not good. Oh, please move them back. Yay! That actually rectified my body. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, crumbs. I've ballsed up something fierce right now. Good crit, though. Quakes. You're supposed to have good move resist. Where's that? 
Yeah, don't, don't, don't turn around and hear the revelation on the lady that is not protected. Thankfully, thankfully that didn't occur. All right, please banish him. Damn, his move resist is too good. The banish does a lot of damage. Good redeem. Worthy redeem. Another revelation on the same target. But if it didn't work the first time, be fucked if it's gonna work the second. Prodigious size alone does not it does leave a corpse. That's important to know. Let's start working our way through that, because as soon as these are at the front, we can use this as more of a recovery fight. They'll only be able to use Vicious Hack, I believe. Oh, this rectifies all of our party positioning. That's actually our basic party. Perfect. Now, the goal here is to stun the one in the back line... Because the one in the front line will hack and move itself backwards. It's going to give me the ability to remove, I guess, 16 stress and heal a little bit. It's not even going to be big. And this guy violently hacks. Oh, does two damage and moves backwards. Exactly. Nothing happens. Uh, our next fight is actually a recovery fight as well. I may have stacked all of these recovery fights next to one another in a fashion that I might describe as inappropriate. Nice. Yeah, Polyp is dead. There's one bad hat, Harry. Nice dodge. A death. Uh, if it was possible, I would have gone for another heal. A trifling victory, but a victory nonetheless. Beautiful. Now, our next fight, because we're going to go around the left ways here. Even if we did use this room, we wouldn't actually be avoiding anything. Because there's nothing in this corridor in the room that we're going to either. So, we are going to be led to a... Priest, priest, and a rapturous cultist, or a rapturous cultist. Leave those two rapturous cultists alive. Get back to full. You know the shenanigans. There's actually one fight after that that is going to suck hardcore. For the moment, whee! Lesh wall. Guess we're focusing on this cultist priest then. Thank you for not flesh walling the other one. That would have been sickeningly annoying. Um, fuck. I can't hit that frontliner with this. I can split the damage, then stun. This isn't good. Alright, I'm gonna have to lunge, which means I forego my ability to use my stun. Beautiful. I'm going to have to go for the stress heal here because I don't want to kill any of those Rapturous Cultists. And it's too likely that I just crit and do a lot of damage. Okay. Split between the person that's guarding and the person that's being guarded is going to allow me to actually deal some damage to the person that's being guarded. Death Lash, uh, Death Lash, rather, occurs again. Please give me the Occultist next. This is really unfortunate. Flesh to Flesh to heal yourself. I need to stun this Occultist off. But I'm not really getting an opportunity. This is what happens when I have only one stunner. I guess I'm just waiting for the guard to remove itself at this point. Somehow I feel like I might be waiting a while.
Not a huge fan of the fact that the Houndmaster has gone so early. Okay, Flesh the Fleshed himself. We now have an open strike on the Cultist Priest. 17 is a lot of damage. Death Lash on the front two lines. Crits for three. Only crits for three because we gave ourselves 80% on the protection stats. So that was actually really important there. He had lowered bleed resist and he still didn't... Damn. Alright, now this is all sorted out. Now they can't hurt a fly. Heal up our friendlies. That, yeah, that's full already. Damn. The stress heals that occurred during the fight were actually really, really good. The problem is just that we got crit a couple of times in the fight. So it looks like we still have the same amount of stress that we began the fight with when really it got so much better over the course. Oh boy, it could not have gotten better, better. Rectify our party positioning. It's possible that we end up giving the Houndmaster a turn to heal himself. Hmm. Basically, it just really depends on how our stress healing goes and how our cultist healing goes. Okay, that stress heal entirely failed. But so did the occultist heal. That's not really going to affect the amount of rounds. Well, it will affect the amount of rounds, but it won't affect the amount of healing in comparison to the amount of stress healing. Okay. That's, that's enough to get her back to full health. That's fine. That'll do, pig. That'll do. We have two more fights before we get to the Hound, the Hound, and then the Templar Warlord. And the reason that it's really important that we do the, the full stress heal and full recover here is because the two fights before that are not friendly. No sorry, Bob. Not even slightly. Okay, good. Hit both of them. Come on. I can't. I can't do it. It's too many rounds. Obliterated. Let's heal some stress while I'm doing it at least. Jeez. Come on. Meet me halfway. Give me the doggy first. Yeah. Stress. Healed, healed. Whatever. Good crit. Didn't stress heal anyone though. These nightmarish creatures can be felled. They can be beaten. Right above us, we should have a malignant growth, a defensive growth, a priest, and a rapture. If we can kill the priest before we have to kill anything else, we're in a good position. I'm just not certain about that. Well, I don't know if it's ever going to happen. It might be now. Twenty? Sure. Nineteen, and you are bleeding. So unless you get flesh to flesh healed, you didn't. Flesh wall went on a different target. A really dumb target. Nonetheless. Let's stun that protection off. Bolster. Oh, please do, buddy. Buff him. He's dead. He's so dead. He couldn't be deader. This is how a life is taken. Rough. Not a huge fan of having a target stunned. Especially when it's my healer. Grand God. Sure. Go for it. You're more than welcome. I 
Again, I'm unfortunately taunted by the fact that I can't hit the front line when I choose to. He's the mind. That guy's already been stunned, bud. Gonna have to find a new boo to hit. Ritualistic Restoration. Oh, you do a lot of healing. Thankfully, I have still a full round for my attacks on this bolster here. Might actually get it in time. It's only a six heal. A if we crit for 42, that's not going to work. Um... I don't know if the defensive growth has any offensive attacks. It does. It has offensive attacks. I've just... They're stress. Fuck. Shit. Not good. Bad. All right. We have to kill it. Like a right or right now kind of sitch. Can we bleed him? Nice crit. That went on for a little longer. We would have been able to bleed that target. Had a debuff of like 66 on it. Stress seal across the party. Didn't work out amazingly. God. We need another round of stress heals and heal self. Unfortunately, I can't do anything to you without killing you. Okay, that might not... No, it does. It does kill you this round. Great is the weapon Too early. Cuts on its own. All right. Well, see, here's the problem, see? Got another malignant growth, followed by a malignant growth, and then a degrowth in the end. But you can get pills for that. Um, so I think I'll go do that fight and then I'll do my first camping afterwards. That seems like a good decision. Spirits are lifted and purpose is made clear. I also think we want to focus on killing the defensive growth first. Did it buff itself? Yeah, it buffed its own protection there. Do I want stuns? Yeah, I kind of want stuns. So I guess I'm going to stand in this position for a while. Yeah, I'm going to stun the one that's probably going to stun me in response. Maul the flat. Holy shit, fuck. It's not good. Good crit, though. We need to send a heal in the back line right now. Jeez. A lot worse than I thought that was going to be. Good heal, though. Really would have liked to stun the malignant growth. But I don't really feel like I had an option there. Especially if it went for it again and hit a bleed, it would have put us in a really precarious position. And then it did both of those things. So, you know, I kind of like being proven right, but not at this expense. I'm going to take that from you. Twenty-six. Nice crit. Yes. Don't stun him, though. Damn it. Whole point was you not stun him. All right. Guess I'm gonna try and take a turn here. Which is gonna be difficult. Yeah. Heals for zero, of course I do. After this round, we'll start getting tarrying warnings. Well, warnings, we won't really get warned. 
That's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to hit that heal. Now he can kill you. Be wary. Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying fall. Okay, Hound Hound Templar Wolf is what we're coming up against next. I want to hit Dark Strength on someone, so I should take the Increasing Stress Trinket off first. You should also definitely use Lash's Kiss. Dark Strength should go on... You use a guard, you only ever use damage. So it goes on the lady that only ever uses damage. Could any of these be beneficial? Yeah, lowering likely stress taken. So encourages themselves would also be good. There's one, and then we'll use a wound care back on you. Perfect. The way is lit. The path <clears throat> is clear. We require only the strength to follow it. Hound Hound Templar Warlord. See, the problem with this is this is going to be our first Warlord, and the Warlords are worse. They have lower health, though, apparently. Or not. Maybe they don't, and I'm just wrong. Seems like I might just be really wrong. Good guarding, though. Nice crit. Executed. Two of my targets should have already used a... Uh, thingy. Uh, thingy that I forgot to use. Bugger. Let's throw this dagger. 24 is a reasonable hit. Revelation. It's dodged. Alright. Use a holy water here because this guy's going to take a couple hits, and if he takes a bleed, it's going to be tragic. Nice dodge. Stinger shot. It's 14. Doesn't bleed. Sorry, doesn't blight. Yeah, I'm going to attribute that to the power of the holy water we just used. Please take Marshall's health down because I need to use his healing. Inspiration and improvement. Beautiful. Managed to actually move that away. Self heals for 15. You did it when I need you to, bud. Well done. Can't pull him out of position because he dodges. Guarantees the kill before a second action. These flesh hounds aren't, like, aren't good to fuck around with, really. So I'm just going to try and remove them from the map. AFAP. As fast as possible. Good crits. Sure, fetch her. See if I care. Stun her all you like. See if I care about that either. Uh, we will get an action ahead of him next turn because we have the flagellant with the extra move speed. I chose not to heal the flagellant because the flagellant can heal himself when he gets on low health. Didn't hit the bleed, unfortunately. If that did hit the bleed, then I would have been able to use a stress heal instead. This expedition at least promises success. Now, here's the differing thing. There's two ways that I can do this. One of them I like, one of them I hate. One of them will have me do uh, one, two, three, three fights. One of them will have me only do two. Mm. So the thing is, I can move myself to a Rapture Rapture fight, but I don't actually need to like full heal right now. If I was in a worse position, then I would go to that. But instead, I can choose to go to a set of two fights, neither of which will be Rapture Rapture. So I won't have the ability to do full party heal, full stress heal. But it will get me an Ancestral Trinket. Which I do need that achievement for getting every Ancestral Trinket. I thought I got that in my original run through, but I don't know. Apparently, I've been mistaken. Okay. 
Okay. Nice crit. Bleed him! Death waits for the slightest Damn! Right the finger on that one, bud. I'm gonna stun this before it has the chance to prevent the cultist priest from dying here. Cultist Priest is now dead. Ritualistic Restoration. Crit heals for 15. Which means it was only basically going to heal for 7. Okay. So now I can use Exsanguinate to heal myself. It's going to be a lot better. Unfortunately, I can't hit any targets that it's really going to help me with. Uh, that's not a grand guard that's just happened back there. I should still go for this, though. 28. If one person moves before... Damn it. Well, my sentence has been invalidated, so... That's fun. Ritualistic Restoration. God! It's just a circle jerk going on in here right now. Not the good kind. Oh, Musa, that's unfortunate. Boss is the front line. That's going to make... The extra 10 crit on that is not okay. We need someone to act. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? Nothing here is. Oh, it was not, it's not being guarded by the defensive growth. I was wondering why that worked. It's not being guarded by the defensive growth. It was simply the flesh wall from the Rapturous Cultist that was guarding it. Unbearable Tremors. This is a small amount of stress across the body. This is just so, I guess just so you can't leave this alone for any period of time. I should have thrown the dagger. Higher chance for a crit there. The wounds of war can be healed, but never hidden. And also higher damage because her thrown dagger has the 10% damage bonus from unerring. Seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. Ancestor's mustache cream. So if we go to the right, M growth, M growth, priest rapture. Easy. In radiance, may we find I will rest before the final fight. Even though my battle buffs won't have worn off. The promise of safety. That's a really unfortunate start for me. We might need to consider just killing one of these malignant growths first. In fact, when I say consider, I mean we definitely have to do just that. Because it'd take two full round. Wow. That's not okay. Resist the second bleed. If that was a crit, he could have gone down to death's door. This is very not okay. It gets his turn. He will go down to death's door, in fact. Is there any way in which I can prevent that? Not really. I'm gonna guard him because... It's fucking important at this point I do. Would have been nice if that was a crit. Just fair, sure. True test. Hold fast or expire. You know, I'm also going to have you use a holy water before you heal yourself because I don't want you bleeding yourself right now, doing a zero and a bleed on yourself. I've seen it happen many a time before and it's bad. 
Bad news, not good, horrible, terrible. A devastating blow. Good split damage. That's not helpful. I'm gonna guard him again. I don't want a finger gun in the back line. All right. We're gonna have much more that we want to do with our camping now. Please bleed. Yeah, we actually managed to bleed the cultist priest. And it's dead. Okay, your first round will be alone next round. So I've got a couple rounds here to heal and do a little stress healing, in fact, as well. Unforeseen. Because he's got to be dead by the end of round six, which just means last person out shut the door. Unless he, like, super heals himself, it's not going to be a problem. Uh, it's a bit of a big boy heal right there. I'm not, I'm not too keen on that one. Again, end of round six is when it needs to be done by, though. Beautiful. You're dead already. Gets your turn and you're done. Beautiful stress heals working out here. I might be able to get another occult. No. Had to try, though. Success so clearly in view. Or is it merely a trick of the light? So that is our second to last fight. We now don't want to buff the torches anymore. Because we're going to want to have those for the final fight. Man, we got a lot of hunger procs in this area. A lot more than I was expecting. I'll readily admit. Circle in the dark. The battle may yet be won. Okay. Lash's kiss has to happen. So does you taking off the demon's cauldron and giving dark strength to the lady in the back line over there. You can now put it back on. Can run therapy dog and encourage it's about it though okay, man's breath for him to remove five we've only five left that's that's fine the match is struck a blazing star is born okay so it will be our two center liners that both get the holy water debuff going into the mid of the fight or rather going into the start of the fight I have kept both of my Hound's Treats for this fight, because this is the worst fight in the dungeon. Splitting Daggers is actually going to be really handy here, because it's going to do a lot of damage to both of them at the same time. It's the Warlord that we want to kill first. Yes, because Stinger Shot is way worse. Wow, it resisted both of those. That was rough. All right, I'm going to need to focus. I'm not going to do split a shot or anything stupid like that then. Shouldn't have eaten that that round. That was dumb. <sighs> okay. Good. 28 crit right there. Occultist is actually doing a hell of a lot of damage here. Sting a shot. Hits for 14. Does not hit the blight, nor the debuff. Torment crits for 26. Yikes. Thankfully, Exsanguinate does hit its bleed, which is 9 points over 3 rounds, so 27 damage is just from the bleed there. I forgot that Fontmire was going to have to be guarding for pretty much this entire fight. Otherwise, I might have had him do something else at the start. Revelation, roll zero. So they're both wasting their first turn doing these revelations, thankfully. 
Doomsday is the worst thing that can happen. It only managed to hit one Blight, and it hit it through the Blight Resist. That's actually kind of ridiculous. That's a really early revelation. Good. Perhaps the turning point. Love to roll damage right now, but I can't really afford to. All right. We're now on the verge of just getting this back under control. I'm going to take that blight away from you. Good dodge. If I'm not going to be stunning, I advance. Yeah, that's true. That's a crit right there. That's a crit and a half, ladies and gentlemen. The nine damage. I took the blight so that I would be able to activate abilities like that. Nineteen and goodbye. Monstrous size has no intrinsic merit, unless inordinate exsanguination be considered a virtue. Quest completed. Let's return to the hamlet, victorious and happy. Unfortunately, we got a hero's ring. Not particularly infused by this. That said. We did get the mustache cream. We got uh, 1,500. We got 18 crests. Could have been a lot worse. Clotter. Wow. And on guard. What the fuck? We actually got amazing and natural eye. We got amazing things that we would have locked in earlier if we had them available. The maniacal cultists are quelled for a time. But there can be no celebration. Your progress is measured only in progressive realization and dawning horror. You are in the shadow of the end. Early riser makes the leper a lot better, I guess. Doesn't make it good. Note. But it does make it better. Dark temptation and fear of mankind are both really abysmal, though. So that is widely referred to as the most difficult of the darkest dungeon missions. The third is super gimmicky. You're supposed to wander around and not find the location effectively for the entire time. But I've done that before and now I know it's at the middle of the map. You don't just wander around the edges like I did last time. So it's just down and to the right. It's just down and to the right. And it's a little bit more down and it's a bit more to the right. And then following that, the final fight is mainly spectacle. It looks really dangerous, but it ain't really not on its face. So as long as we have a party to do each of the next two, we are covered. Mevrel? He's definitely next mission. So is either Derville or Vildair. I guess that means I'm pairing them with one of the Vestals. One of the three available, in fact. Um, I guess, maybe. See, the thing is, Mevrel needs to stand in the front line the entire time and have Iron Swan available, which is going to be terrifyingly sad when she doesn't have that available because I have someone push past her. That's why I don't want to pair her with a man-at-arms or with a other example here. So I use both of my grave robbers. I'm already going to be taking with her a hound master, at least. Was I? No, if I take a second line hound master... Oh, that's 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 a sexy plan. I can take a second line hound master. He just won't be able to stress heal, but I'm not going to be in the dungeon for long and I'm going to stress heal once I leave. And the things in that dungeon don't actually inflict a lot of stress. 
I already know my plan for the next two dungeons then. We've got either Braquois or Lulia plus Mevrel plus either Bordeaux or Derville plus a Vestal. So Vestal, Plague Doctor, Hellion, mm, Houndmaster for the next. And then for the final, we're going to have the same setup that you have in the original dungeons. That is Red Hook. We are going to have a Man at, uh, Man at Arms. No, we're not going to have a Man at Arms. We're going to have Ragnard, Dismas, so Crusader, Highwayman. And we're going to have Plague Doctor and we are going to have Vestal. And that's going to be it. That is going to complete those darkest dungeon missions. And then we can focus on getting back into the courtyard and leveling up other characters. That's actually something that I'm going to be really, really keen to do. Be able to level up my other characters and explore more of the town events and things like that. Because, of course, our the 16 people... Well, not 16. The 14 people who return from the Darkest Dungeon are going to have this little tag next to them. These torches basically just mean, yeah, this person's never going back to the Darkest Dungeon. They also give Resolve Experience buffs to people that move with them in dungeons so they can power level other characters, basically. And also, they don't count towards your capacity of characters so we will be able to just build up an entirely new crew if we want for some of the low level missions that i still have to do like low level bosses i'm gonna have to do that for the moment though my name has been rhapsody your name has been raymond hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time